for the big shots in Cheyenne, just a short helicopter ride down from the Daddy of Maw. That's big fun up there in Frontier Days. Welcome to downtown Denver. The rain has cleared out and postponed batting practice this afternoon, but it looks like a beautiful evening for baseball. As the Rockies open up a nine-game homestand, They'll begin with the Cincinnati Reds of Dusty Baker leading the National League Central. They are playing great baseball. Welcome, everybody. Glad, as always, you're along with Jeff Houston. I'm Drew Goodman. How about those Reds? Not only have they played good baseball, they've been doing it without one Joey Votto, who may be one of the two or three best players in the game right now. Yeah, they're 8-2 and two since Votto went out, and they're 18 games above 500, second-best record in the National League, only trailing the Washington Nationals. So Dusty Baker has got to be pleased with where they're sitting right now. Their batting average, uh, that's just ninth in the National League. The, the home run sit at fifth, but it really comes down to their pitching staff. You see the ERA at 328, and that's including the starters, relievers, and if you get back to that back end of that bullpen for for the for the Reds, it, it's really dangerous because if you're thinking that you're going to come from behind on these guys with what they have, especially Chapman coming out of the end, it, it, you're you're really asking for trouble. Here's the thing about their rotation: we always talk about injury being a part of sport. Well, good health is a part of sport, part of successful sport. They have not missed a start, any of their five in their rotation. Yeah, 98 games now. And the last time they went this far, they done it 80 games in, back in 92. And, and they've only used 30 players throughout the whole year. So it's not only their starting staff, but it's also their bullpen in general, or their ball, ball club in general. Yeah, it's been a, a year of good health so far for Cincinnati. When we come back, speaking of good health, look who's back. Number 17 will be in the lineup. Rosario tonight in his return to the mound. 
His start pushed back a few days by just general soreness. Nothing to be alarmed about. So Drew Pomerantz will have a couple of extra days making the start tonight. He says he feels much better. Well, and that's the good news because you don't want to ever send a guy out there when you're talking about a bicep for a young kid. Is it going to alter his mechanics? And I think we saw that a little bit in his last start against San Diego. His velocity was down. But the starts against Washington and San Diego right after he came back were pretty special. He was back up to 94, 95, breaking a lot of bats. And that was good to see from Drew Pomerantz, and that'll be one of the things to look for tonight early on in this game is, is that velocity back up to where we expect it to be. Well, a guy who hates to sit out is Todd Helton. It doesn't matter that he's approaching his 39th birthday. It's probably been no fun to be around <laughs> over the last <laughs> couple of weeks. He's back in there tonight. Well, that's good. And, and just like Drew Pomerantz, who missed some time, Todd Helton missed some time with that hip. And he says it feels good, and he'll know more when he goes out here tonight. It, do we see the leg kick getting up higher than it had been? All those things. But anytime you can add a guy like Todd Helton into the lineup, it just makes your ball club that much stronger. And it's not only what he can do offensively and how he challenges the other manager but I think what happens is you you rely on him so much defensively that when he's out you forget you just don't you forget kind of how good he is absolutely he helps out that left side yeah, in especially particular. those balls in the dirt he's, he's the best I've ever seen at it we are set for baseball the challenge for the Rockies the Cincinnati Reds Rockies and Reds come on back to 20th and Blake with us. Ball on Root Sports is brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota moving forward by CenturyLink Fast Speed and a low monthly price. Visit CenturyLink.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Turned into a very pleasant evening in downtown Denver. Drew Pomerantz and the Rockies again beginning a nine-game homestand. It'll Spent 10 days as Monday is an off day. Unusual the schedule provides two off days in the space of uh, five days. Rockies were off yesterday after beating the Arizona Diamondbacks on Wednesday, 4 to 2. That's Zach Cozart, one of uh, a couple of very impressive rookies that the Reds have in their lineup. Dusty Baker has written out this lineup presented by Southwest Airlines. Drew Stubbs can flat out fly. He'll be in the two hole following Zach Cozart. Then Brandon Phillips will bat third. That's uh, the place you normally see Joey Votto. Phillips, an all-star. He's done a tremendous job. Jay Bruce will bat cleanup. Ryan Ludwick will bat next. Then the veteran Scott Rowland. 
Todd Frazier's that rookie, the other rookie we were referring to. He'll be at first base for Votto tonight. Ryan Hannigan, a veteran behind the plate. And the Iron Man, Bronson Arroyo, on the hill. Well, we'll know very quickly, Jeff, how good Pomerantz feels by his velocity in the first pitch of the night at 94, and that's and that, a good sign. Yeah, because it tells you that the bicep is healthy, the arm angle where you want it to be, 0 oh, 3 4 Four one five ERA at home this year, but Rockies have not been scoring any runs for Drew Pomerantz at home. In his seven starts this year, they have not scored more than two runs a game at Coors Field. Well, in his last start in San Diego, he was 89 to 91, and since his return to the big leagues he has been sitting on 93 94 just like he's doing now and and you'll see pitches at 95 so you knew something wasn't right in his last outing and, and obviously he's feeling better well, so far and the other thing too many good swings against him that was a defensive swing from Kozar and though the, the hitters will tell you what kind of stuff you have it said all the time but the the swings that San Diego was taking off him uh, were were too good for the stuff that drew Pomerantz has and that's one broken bat. Well, that's, that's, that, we we'll we'll keep we, a track of that one, too. we got to keep track. Cozart struggling so far in the second half, just seven for 42. Second round pick back in 2007. And he just gets a piece there. Well, it's a battle of a couple of guys who went to Ole Miss. Cozart. A star player at Ole Miss, and of course Drew Pomerantz, one of the best pitchers in the country when he was drafted after his junior year out of Ole Miss. Here's the one-two. Gozart's been impressive for the Cincinnati Reds, being an open today st starter as a rookie. On the ground to short, and Rutledge. Another SEC player throws out Zach Cozart. And another broken bat. So he sawed off uh, two of Cozart's weapons. As Drew Stubbs will take his turn. Defensively, it'll be Carr going left. Dexter Fowler in center. Michael Kadires would play a lot of first, but uh, 17's back. So Todd will be at first. Scudero, Rutledge, and Pacheco in the infield. Rosario. Making his third consecutive start behind the plate. Drew Stubbs, kind of a, a swing and miss guy. He's got a ton of pop. He's got a ton of speed. But he'll punch out a lot. Yeah, and it's tough because they've tried to hit Drew Stubbs lead off. They've also put him back into the middle to late part of the lineup to see if he could drive in more runs, if he could cut down on his strikeouts. But his swing is his swing. And he's... He, in that regard, he reminds me of Corey Patterson in that he's got great speed. When he gets on, he's, he can steal bases. He has 20 stolen bases, but not a prototypical guy with speed where he strikes out too much. I don't know how many guys would hit that pitch. That, that thing looked like it was rising. I know physicists will tell you that's impossible, but that was a difficult pitch up and in under the hands at 94. Go back in there. That's the intent of Rosario. And this ball's popped up in the neighborhood of Marco Scudero. He backpedals and makes the catch. Two outs. That break a bat? I don't, I don't think so, but it, it was in towards the label. Two gone as Brandon Phillips will approach to uh, make Todd Helton eligible to play and active. The Rockies sent out Edward Cabrera back to Colorado Springs. Here's Brandon Phillips, who's done such a sensational job. He does a great job all the time, but in the absence of Votto, he's been outstanding. He hits the first pitch to Rutledge, and that's an outstanding opening act for Drew Pomerantz. One, two, three, couple of ground balls, couple of broken bats. We'll see the Rockies on O when we come back.
bat very well will lead things off for the Rockies he has the second best batting average in the game among leadoff hitters to a fellow by the name of Mike Trout over in the American League Dexter overall hitting 302 with 12 bombs 40 RBI Southwest batting order Marco Scudero will bat second Carlos Gonzalez will bat in that third spot Cargo had uh, Wednesday off, so he's had two full days off. Kadir helped back to the five spot. Rosario Pacheco, Josh Rutledge with a cool 356 average, and then Drew Pomerantz, who owns a home run this year. Bronx and Arroyo, the former Boston Red Sox, on the hill tonight for the Cincinnati Reds, and he wants to wipe out memories of the last time he pitched here. Yeah, he, he doesn't like it at all. His career numbers against the Rockies, over 5-6 ERA. Not an overpowering guy as Bronson Arroyo. You'll see the fastball 86, 87 miles an hour. A lot of different arm angles for his slider, curveball, high leg kicks. He truly, uh, as you look at his arsenal, Huey, he, look at his like 18 well, pitches. Yeah, and he throws anything in any count. And that's where Ryan Hannigan's and, and he are going to have to be on the same page. This is fouled off and out of play. Otherwise, it's too long. He, it, Hannigan would have to take his glove off and throw down both both sets of fingers from his hands to say, "Okay, I want pitch seven. Right. the sinker down and check swing comebacker Let's take a look at the Reds defensively part of the reason they find themselves at 58 40 and leading the National League Central has been their defense Ludwig Stubbs and Bruce they have the fewest errors of any team in the National League they have the best fielding percentage Roland still a very good fielder Cozart and Phillips up the middle Frazier at first Hannigan behind the plate Ryan has thrown out nine of his last 17 and just 51 airs for Cincinnati this year 986 fielding percentage Marco Scudero takes strike one five for 16 lifetime against Bronson Arroyo Reds were off yesterday. They swept the Astros the other day. This ball's well hit left center field. Drew Stubbs with the good speed will run it down. Who wants tacos? Remember when the Rockies scored seven or more runs during any game? Go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six and get your Rockies taco special. Hi there, sweetie. Hello. She adorable. She waving to everybody. Cargo punched out five times between Monday night and Tuesday night. Jim Tracy felt like he'd just been grinding since uh, the All Star game and gave him Wednesday off. So a full 48 hours of rest. And Cargo takes ball one. Well, he didn't get the break, and rightfully so, at the All-Star break. So he came back. And Jim was hoping he could give him the Friday off, but he played that game and just saw it in Arizona. It looked a little wore down. This ball's in the air to center field right at Stubbs. A 1-2-3 start for Arroyo, matching what Pomeranz did at the top of the first. We move on to the second. No score at Coors Field.
of the second as we are scoreless this Friday night. It is a Friday, fans, you know by now what that means. It's a fan Friday here at Root Sports. You can tweet us your questions at Root Sports underscore JC. We'll answer some live throughout the broadcast. Let's get it started with this question from Charlie Drysdale. He wants to know, I know the starting pitchers pick the uniforms most days. Are there any pitchers who are superstitious about the style that they choose? Well, as you can see, Drew Pomeranz today chose the vest, uh, the sleeveless jerseys. And I've heard a lot of pitchers really do like those jerseys in the way they feel because you're not constricted in your arm motion. However, I do know that Jeff Francis, I guess you could say he's superstitious because he doesn't like to pick his jersey. He said, I don't care what we wear. I'm not going to pick it. So for Jeff, it's not a big deal. For other pitchers, it is a big deal. And on Mondays always, there's a purple jersey. Guys? Yeah, you know what? That's true to form about Jeff Francis. I mean, he's pretty low-key. Good pitch there. Swung on a miss by Jay Bruce. Jenny, by the way, I, I know you were attending a wedding of a close friend in San Diego uh, the last few days. How'd that go? It was wonderful. Thank you so much for asking, Drew. I yeah. really appreciate that. You just that. flew and you back know today, huh? Yeah. yeah, I did just fly back today. We're having a good time. Uh, bridesmaids, you don't always get to pick your dress color because I know you were wondering about that. So <laughs> just so you know, I did not pick the dress color, but it was you a did. lovely coral. Well, sure, the bride did a great well, job. I'm sure you look beautiful and whatever that <laughs> That's was. way too nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. And, and Okay, good deal. I'm glad you had fun. 0-2 <laughs> on Jay Bruce, and this is in the air to left. Cargo will retreat a couple of steps, one out. One gone, that'll bring up Ryan Ludwig. News from the world of baseball. Zach Granke, who you knew was going to get traded any day. The trade deadline rapidly approaching four days away, July 31st. That's the non-waiver deadline. And Granke gets moved to the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I didn't realize they had a shortage of pitching. I know Irvin Santana hasn't had the uh, year that he had hoped, but you're talking about a rotation that has C.J. Yep. Wilson, has Dan Harron, has Jared Weaver. Weaver. Yeah, and, and now, now, they, now they've added Zach Greinke. Yeah, and and the Brewers got the Angels' number one overall prospect and a couple Double A pitchers. And Bob Melvin came out two days ago and said he was going to deal him before the All Star or before the trading deadline. It's like, all right, let me see what I can get. Yeah, line up. And, and the Angels ponied up to try to catch up to the Rangers. Two and one. Angels sitting five back of the Texas Rangers, but also the Oakland A's in that division, just five and a half back, and they're winning tonight at Baltimore. The A's, who've lost just two games since the All-Star break. I've just been informed, just seeing it up on the board, that the Baltimore Orioles have now taken the lead from the A's 6-5. Ball four. Pomerantz looked like he slipped on that delivery. So Ludwig, a one out walk in the second inning. I want to go back to September 11th of 2011. Drew Pomerantz making his Rockies debut against these same Cincinnati Reds. Five innings, two hits, a couple walks, two strikeouts, and pretty much everything that was advertised for Drew Pomerantz in that start. Got to feel nice for him to know that he's faced this club or this organization before and he had success. Yeah, he's a confident guy. You look at Scott Rowland at the plate. And congratulations to Rowland tonight. Game number 2000 in his fine career. 312 home runs, 1,270 driven in. Tremendous third baseman. And that's a strike, one and one. That's 292nd game for the Cincinnati Reds. 18th active player who's participated in 2,000 plus. You know, when Votto comes back, Frazier's going to have to play, and he plays third base now. This is in the air to shallow right. Kadire will get there. That's the second half. 
Yeah, Frazier, who you're talking about, Todd Frazier, the next guy coming up for the Reds. But when Roland was out earlier this year, Todd Frazier was the guy that was taking the majority of the starts at third base. Frazier's a big, strong guy. He's out of Rutgers University, 6'3 and about 220 pounds. He was a supplemental first round pick in 07 out of Rutgers. At a high school, he was drafted in the 37th round by the Colorado Rockies. So the Rockies scouting department is very familiar with Todd Frazier. College shortstop. He's got pop. Ten home runs. He was a part of that group of Reds and Rockies players last time they played at Great American Ballpark back on the 27th. There was nine home runs in that game. Cincinnati hit four, Rockies hit five, and it was a Great American Ballpark record for number of home runs in a game. One, two, and that's all for Todd Frazier. Drew Pomerantz with his first punch out of the ball game. Ryan Ludwig left at first base after walking. Kadire Helton and Rosario when we return. Powered by your Colorado Hyundai dealers, step up to the plate, get more miles per gallon with the hottest car line in America, Hyundai. Rockies and Reds tomorrow, 5.30. We're on the air with the pregame show Sunday at 12.30 here on Root Sports. Monday, an off day, then the cards are in town. Beginning on Tuesday, this season, save responsibly when you shop at your Colorado Hyundai dealers. Kadire reaches for one and hits it in the air to Drew Stubbs, who will make his third catch in a row. I may have to run out some Gatorade to him. <laughs> well, after the ball that he tracked down off of Marco Scudero, he got some in the in between innings. So Todd Helton returns to the lineup and he takes the first pitch which is more like a changeup for so, a strike. Sometimes you can't tell from Bronson Arroyo. You have to wait to look to see what the velocity is on it because his fastball looks like his changeup looks like a slider. Helton seven for 19 a couple of home runs against Arroyo. Tulowitzki's five for nine against uh, Arroyo with a couple home runs. Unfortunately, uh, you will not see Troy tonight. This is fouled off. 
Swinging the bat a little bit, doing more baseball activities, but he's still a ways away from returning. We get that question quite frequently. How's Chulowitzki doing? As long as he keeps progressing. That's what you like to hear. One and two on Todd. Boy, a couple weeks off didn't hurt his eye, did it? And it will never hurt his eye. That's Todd Helton has the the great eyes that the great hitters have. It's interesting. They have him in pull mode in the infield. Well, I think that has more to do with Bronson Arroyo than Todd and Bronson not being overpowering. Change up sliders, fastball. We've seen 85, touched 88 a moment ago. That's below Major League average. And a comebacker, Arroyo, with the second out of the inning. Arroyo's already been around two outs longer than he was back <laughs> in, on September 11th of last year. When he went one plus innings, gave up six runs on seven hits, including three home runs. Join in on the conversation with Toyota Talk. Text Toyota to 720-720. And if you send us a text tonight, you'll be entered to win a one-year family membership to the Denver Zoo, so you can see all the all-new Toyota Elephant Passage exhibit. Willeen Rosario, last time we saw him, he was trotting around the bases, hit a home run. Down in Arizona, his 16th of the year. Like his other 15th, they were bomb. I mean, it was 8 to 10, 12 rows deep. Off the end of the bat. And a two strike count on Rosario. Looks like a catcher, doesn't he? You don't big look, leg, you big know, arms. Once he identifies himself as a baseball player, you don't have yeah. to ask, hey, where do you play? No. You do, you, you're a catcher, right? You're not guessing shortstop. This ball ripped down the line, and it is foul. Well, you want to talk about a no-doubter? Here's the swing in the fourth inning on Wednesday. It was just nice to be down by the dugout during that game to hear the reaction from the players and all the oohs and ahs you get from a major league player when another one hits one that hard and that far. 0 oh, 2. And in foul ground, Todd Frazier is going to make the catch. Bronson Arroyo has set down the first six Rockies he has seen tonight. No score. We Third inning, Ryan Hannigan will lead things off. Utah fans, you only have a couple of days left to tell us why you're a fan and enter to win the ultimate fan experience. 
which includes travel and hotel for you and a guest to visit Denver to watch your favorite team in action from the Root Sports Suite and all kinds of other very good prizes. For official rules, to enter, visit rootsports.com slash Rocky Mountain. Ryan Hannigan, Bronson Arroyo, and Zach Cozart against Drew Pomerantz, who's been terrific so far. And that fastball cuts inside, misses ball one on Hannigan. But you can tell the confidence for Drew Pomerantz tonight because of the amount of times that he's pitching inside already. See, Hannigan, one of those uh, few guys that hasn't had success swinging the bat in his career against, it's not just the Rockies pitching, but and of course, field factors in there, but he's hit less than 200 against the Rockies through the years. 2 and 0. I'm sure he's probably tried to change his swing coming here. Oh, I'm going to hit a bunch of home runs. And so you drop the back shoulder, you open your hips, you try to lift every baseball, and you can't do it, and you get away from your swing. There's a shattered bat and a roller that's going to squeak through the middle of the diamond. That's hitting them where they ain't. So the first hit allowed by Drew Pomerantz. Watch the cut on this baseball. Yeah, watch Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo where this ball almost hits the bat twice because he got jammed so bad. One, almost a second time. I've never seen that. No, before. where it, it hits so close to your hands and then travels towards the barrel. Reds have won seven consecutive games. Mark Berry, the third base coach. That's a season high for them in that seven straight. They haven't had an eight game winning streak since 2006. By a couple of games, the Cardinals by five and a half. When they return home after this series, they'll play a four game set against the Padres, who are playing much better baseball as Rockies fans know. And then Dusty Baker's team will take on the Bucks for three. That'll be a that, big, big series. And it will. It'll be sold out. There'll be a, it, almost a playoff atmosphere. They put the uh, slug bun on. That's tough to. Uh, that's a. The, a tough assignment for a pitcher when you have a guy with a plus fastball with movement like Pomerantz. Well, so much timing's involved. You you put the barrel out in front, you pull it back, you have to try to see the ball and then swing, hit the top half of it. Not easy. You're gonna go back to the regular bunt. That looked like uh, it was in there, not called the strike by home plate umpire Marty Foster. Where is that pitch? It was right down uh, the middle. He just flat out whiffed on this. He just missed it. How is that not well, a strike? And you saw Willene Rosario's reaction where he shook his head like, what do we have to do? They have the umpires missing two once in yes, a while. Yes, they do. And if you're Drew, don't get frustrated. Don't don't think you have to put it even better throw it in the same spot. He'll call it a strike this time. He just he just missed it. Yeah, they Thank you. The, they put the butcher boy on again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Two and two. I right, get your tickets now to see the Rockies take on the Cardinals for their only 2012 Coors Field appearance beginning July 31st through August 2nd. Three and two on Arroyo. Nobody out, Hannigan at first. And 
that final go foul and the strikeout over Royo is the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Zach Cozart. They're putting together the rules uh, 100 plus years ago. So you know what? If a guy bunts and he bunts on the third strike and he fouls it off, let's just, should, let's just get rid of him. He shouldn't get another chance. Right. <laughs> He's done. He's out. Gone. <laughs> Next. The rookie Cozart at the plate. He hit a ground ball to short his first time. There's a strike. He leads all National League rookies in hits with 90. And extra base hits with 34. He has 26 multi hit games. Ian Frazier tied for second in home runs among rookies behind Willene Rosario. And the interesting thing is, Cozart and Frazier, they all have plenty more at bats than Willene. Frazier about 20 more at bats, but then you look at a guy like Cozart. And you're talking 170 more at bats for Zach Cozart. And six fewer home runs. There's another broken bat. Two outs as that was handled by Josh Rutledge. And that's four broken bats. That'll bring up Drew Stubbs. He had a pop to second his first time up. Seven for his last 16 at the plate. Everybody seems to have picked it up in the absence of Joey Votto. Especially Brandon Phillips. Stubbs has been instrumental. Yeah, but that's what you need. It's not just one guy picking it up to replace a Joey Votto, because that's hard to do. Nobody can replace Joey. But if you have six guys that just increase their output that matches the one guy in bottom so that's why they're eight and two with joey on the dl with the knee problem balls line foul out of play todd frazier's hit 300 playing first base with Votto on the dl there's some speculation you know Votto had the the knee cleanup scope that he could come back quicker than was first estimated. Was that, you know, four to six weeks yeah. initially? That he may be short of, uh, much shorter than the four week period. Here's the 0 2, swung on and missed. Pomerantz with his third strikeout as he gets stuck. We'll go to the bottom half of the third. Rockies looking for their first knock against Arroyo.
underscore JC. That's where you ask your questions. We're going to go to a question right now. This one's from Jerry in GJ. He wants to know, did Todd enjoy playing in Grand Junction as much as we enjoyed him being here? Well, I got the chance to ask Todd that very question today. It was awesome. You know, I, I really enjoy going and being with the young guys and, uh, um, you know, seeing a different fan base. Uh, they love the Rockies up there, and it, it's cool to see. The uh, facility was great, um, just night and day compared to Casper uh, as far as the field. Um, but that place is used to holding some big games with the Junior College World Series. So uh, it was neat. It was, uh, it was a good experience. And, of course, I couldn't help but ask Todd what he fed the boys down there as uh, they're just starting their major league careers. He said steak. Very expensive steak, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure Todd could afford it though. He's doing just fine, right, guys? Well, you and I have put a collection together up here in the booth, and we're going to help out Todd when we see him after the ball. That's game. so kind of you. See, I'll I throw gotta, in. I have a five spot in my bag, oh, five geez. cents. Wow. So I'll throw I, that in. Okay. Well, I'm going for a quarter. <laughs> the check goes thrown out by the shortstop, Zach Cozart. Yeah, but that's a time-honored tradition, though. When a major leaguer goes down to the minor leagues, he has to buy the spread. But he goes down there, he not only buys the spread, but he gets a nice round of applause from the fans, gets three hits in, in the two-game series. Couple hits his first night, RBI. David, David Dahl, Dahl scored the number there. one pick, tweeted about Todd coming down. And then he gets to score a run when he drives him in. Neat stuff. And, and you can tell with Todd, he genuinely enjoyed the few days over in Grand Junction. Throwback time for him. This ball's on the ground from Rutledge to Brandon Phillips. Two outs. Arroyo's thrown only 27 pitches well, and getting eight outs. Yeah, he's fourth in the National League, though, in fewest walks allowed, just 1.6 per nine innings. He also throws strikes 67% of the time, which also sets him fourth in the National League. If you're not going to be overpowering, you've got to make your defense stay alert behind you. And you notice uh, the elbow pad on... Uh, through Pomerantz, both he and Christian Friedrich throw lefty and bat righty. I was talking to Christian about it, and you know, we've mentioned that it's unusual that they're not wearing elbow pads. And in actuality, and this is the first time I've seen Drew with it, but in actuality, Friedrich does. It's a smaller one, okay. and, and it's under his sleeve, so, so it's, it, hidden. It, it's hidden. It's hard to detect. He's kidding. He said it was up to me. I'd, you know, we're one of those ones from the top of the shoulder <laughs> like all the way a, down to my Like head. a shin yeah, guard. Yeah. Here's a 2-1 on Drew. And strike three. So Bronson Arroyo with his first punch out. He has set the Rockies down in order in the first three innings. No score.
Jeffco, the company that repairs all kinds of hits. Josh Rutledge has been producing hits since he got called up from Tulsa. This was a big hit, his first career home run down in Phoenix at Chase Field. Check out your local Mako for collision repairs and auto painting for as low as 349. Visit Mako.com today. Rutledge hitting 414 since July 18th, one of the top five averages in the National League. He's talking to a, a scout today who unsolicited George, or George, excuse me, Jeff, brought up Josh Rutledge and how impressed he was with everything he's done so far. And then he started talking to a couple other scouts about him. So you're going to really like this kid. Oh, one air. So you like his defense, what he's brought to the table there. But what impressed me most about Josh Rutledge when he we had the, the tough night a couple nights ago, three punch outs, 0 for 3. He comes back with two knocks the following night. And those are the types of rebound performances you like to see from a young guy, but you're, you're not sure if that's going to happen or not. He did, and he came through with flying colors. Here's Brandon Phillips. He grounded the short on the first pitch he saw, and now he gets a breaking ball. That was a, I like that decision by Willene Rosario. And we talk about the evolution of a young catcher and how he understands to call a game. Brandon Phillips will fire at that first pitch. He fed him a fastball the first time. You live dangerously if you continue the same pattern against great hitters. Yeah, so you go to the knuckle curve. That ball was a fastball center cut. Phillips lined it back through the originator. Just missed it to Drew Palmerantz. Just couldn't get the glove there fast enough. Angry with himself, but Brandon Phillips takes it right back up the middle. Jay Bruce hit the ball in the air to left field his first time up. 19 home runs. He's driven in 61. Did a lot of damage early in the season. A player of the week earlier this season. And talk about a guy that has his ups and downs. Jay Bruce, when he's hot, he's as hot as anybody you're going to find. But those down troughs, oof, they're big like the Grand Canyon. One and one on Bruce. 18 career games against the Rockies, just a 213 batting average. Off the end of the bat, and Kadire will make the catch, spin, and throw, trying to get Phillips moving up. Very accurate throw, considering. Kadir was running toward the wall, had to pirouette, and then throw to Josh Rutledge. But just shows you the heads up play of Brandon Phillips. Smart play. It was smart because he noticed where Michael Kadir was running to. He's a right handed catch or throw guy, so he's going to have to spin all the way around and make an accurate throw with velocity to second base. And now he's in scoring position. That that's understanding the ballpark you're playing in. Huey, you played it, you know, at Wrigley Field. You're not going to get that no. done at, at a Wrigley Field at a smaller ballpark. You might not might not even be able to do that at Great American Ballpark, their home yard. But here, and I'm sure it's something I'm it guessing was, covered in your, in your pre-series session with. with Hitting coach, pitching coach, one of the things that's touched upon. You look to take that extra break base whenever you can. You know the outfielders are going to play two or three steps deeper than what they would normally play at home. So see that, recognize it. Brandon Phillips did. This is popped up and playable for Rosario, we think. You know, you know what factored into that? The, the on slick deck circle. on deck circle. He looked down for a second because you put your spike on that, you're going to go flying. And you're gonna, your feet are going to come up from underneath you. That was the glance you were talking about, Drew. If he keeps running and goes for it with the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mode, 
illustrates just how close that reach was, but it was the looking down to see where the the on deck circle was looking back up that slowed him down enough not to catch that ball. And Tulowitzki not eligible to catch it, is he? No. They don't give him a glove. He's not. Can't do that. But you know he was giving him advice, saying, you're okay. You've got room. Now, if he was going towards the Reds dugout, nothing. Two-strike count on Ryan Ludwig. Over St. Louis Cardinal. San Diego Padre. And now Rosario will go out. So yes, ask our at t trivia question. What's the record for most runs scored in a Rockies game? Ludwig first hit the big leagues in 2002 with Texas. Also played with Cleveland and Pittsburgh along the way. And that's a fair ball. And that mistake is going to cost Drew Pomerantz a run. The double brings home Brandon Phillips. Seventeenth double this season for Ryan Ludwig. Straight out of the hand will get a look on the knuckle curveball from Drew. But the head positioning of Ryan Ludwig, he drops his head down, and where your head goes, your body will start to lean that direction. And he had to lean down there to get down there to flick that ball into left field. Scott Rowland, that goes off of Pomerantz. No play for Pacheco, and now Ludwig. Will move to third. A base hit, third of the inning. Scott Garrett, Jim Trace, you'll go check on Pomerantz. Where did this get him? It looked like the left ankle, right above the ankle for Drew Pomerantz. Right closer to the knee. Scott rolling, motoring the whole way to first. Checking to see if it was on the knee or more towards the flesh part and not on bone. Few warm up tosses. That's his drive leg, the one he needs to st stay back on to get on top when he delivers the baseball home. And typically it has less to do with what we see right now yep. and more to do with what happens after he sits for a half inning. Next half inning or two innings down the road. Says he's fine. Good news. For now. Yes. First and third situation. Ryan Ludwig's at third. Scott Rowland is at first. And Todd Frazier will come up just one out. The Reds have scored a run. Frazier punched out his first time. Frazier, another Jersey boy making good in the big leagues like Mike Trout.
Here's the 1-0 on Frazier. I want to go back to a home run that Frazier hit earlier this year against the Rockies from the side. Watch how his hands come off this bat. He lets go of the bat as he's making contact with the ball. That ball went out at Great American Ballpark. Uh, and I, I've never seen I've that I've never before. seen that before. The bat ended up by the pitcher's mouth. 3-0. and oh. There's a term in hitting. They say throw your hands. That's a drill you do when you're just messing around. You're thinking about throwing the hands and the barrel should come out. 3-0 swing. Fowler in somewhat shallow center field. Here's the throw to the plate. It is not in time. And the second run comes home in the person of Ryan Ludwig. Sack fly for Frazier. RBI number 34 for Frazier. That Dexter, wasn't Dexter Dexter's would best like throw. to have that one back. Yeah, that was not his best throw. Because we've seen Dexter make throws where it's a one hop or all the way in the air. And he buried that one on the other side of the mound and then three or four skipped to home plate. Want to know on Ryan Hannigan, and suddenly in this inning, there have been three hits and more unfavorable counts early in this ball game. First couple innings, you saw Pomerantz working ahead. Ball and a strike on Hannigan, but a broken bat base hit up the middle with one out, or excuse me, leading off the third. Drew pitched out of trouble that inning. And that's another base hit. Well, the good news is the pitcher's coming up. The two balls hit this inning. The, the, the big one by Ryan Ludwig and now this one by Ryan Hannigan that have come on the curveball. Which is interesting because the fastball was producing outs, broken bat outs, most notably. With that natural cut he has, and uh, he's gotten hit hard, as you suggest, on the breaking ball. I, I like the breaking pitch, first pitch to Brandon Phillips. He comes back with the fastball. Maybe he thought that because of that, the Phillips getting the hit on the fastball, that he needed to go away from it. But the, the fastball that he hit, Jeff, was out over the, right. the outer he, third of the plate as opposed to the success he's had is inner third. Right, and maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe his thought was, well, I, I got beat by my fastball. He wasn't thinking I got beat by my fastball because it was away from Phillips. Do not, that's a good do, live yeah. fastball there. Right, do not slow this down to no. Arroyo's no. bat speed. Go right back same spot be done with it and go hit two strike count on Bronson Arroyo with runners at first and second two to nothing Cincinnati in the fourth like he walked off the set of the Partridge family. <laughs> One and two. Arroyo is a, a con uh, accomplished musician, though, so he could have played on the Partridge family. 
He's a very accomplished musician. And there's a strikeout. So Arroyo will jog back to the dugout. The Reds get a couple of runs on four hits in the fourth inning. Two to nothing. The Rockies without a hit so far. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, top of the order again for the Rockies. AT&T trivia question. What's the record for most runs scored in a Rockies game? There's a by reason. Both teams. Yeah, by both teams combined. There's, there's a reason we asked it tonight. The Reds have been involved in a lot of high scoring runs here. In fact, on May the 19th, 1999, the Reds defeated the Rockies 24 to 12. How many baseballs were used in that game? Many pitches thrown? A lot. Would be the answer to both <laughs> questions. Dexter hit a check swing comebacker his first time. And he gets the slow hook. Good news for the Rockies. The first time through the lineup, it, Royal just a 222 average typically. Didn't give up any hits in the first three against Colorado. Second time, a 293 clip. It goes up to 298 the third time because you start to see the speed. You recognize the pitches. He went back to the same pitch and it's 0-2. He is a he's very almost unique. A guy, well, he's almost a guy that you have to think as a hitter opposite field. Just take away the whole, if you're a left-handed hitter, the whole right side. Think left field from the left field line to left center. And you'll pull a ball just naturally if you see it inside. But a unique delivery. I know that's where you were going with the high leg kick and it's straight out. Yeah, the leg is straight. And he gets Dexter on that curveball. Second strikeout for Bronson Arroyo. His first came against Drew Pomerantz. Marco Scudero probably has hit the ball hardest. It's not easy to look back and figure that out. He had a ball to deep center field in the first inning. Well, fans, if you're hitting the road, you can subscribe to MLB.tv to see every Rockies out of market game online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. And this is a little pop up. The top Frazier handles.
Carlos Gonzalez will hit. He lined to center his first time up. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies tickets by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. Cargo five for 12 lifetime against Arroyo has not taken him deep. Certainly looked like he had more patience in that first at bat than what we witnessed early in that series against Arizona. There's the first hit. That's a good sign for Carlos. I think he had that approach you were talking about, and, and the ball was soft and in, and so naturally the ball was pulled. And that's a 26 game home hitting streak for Cargo. The record at Coors Field, Larry Walker. 30 straight. Yeah, and they're trying to go away, and the pitch was down and away from Carlos, but as I mentioned, think the other way, and then you'll catch it out in front. That's what Carlos did with that swing. Dyer at the plate. He's a tough guy to run on and Hannigan throwing out 41% of the runners, so it's not a good combination. Cargo started to go there. But that's why he shut it down is because of how quick Arroyo was to the plate. You have a time clock in your head as a base stealer. And you know when you take off, that guy was too fast for me to be able to make it. Two strike count on Kadire. Michael had a two home run game against Arizona earlier in the week. Second multi home run game this year. He had one against the Oakland A's. Eighth time in his career he's had a multi home run game. And two different benches, 82 mile an hour changeup the first time, a 90 mile an hour fastball the second time. The ball he hit the second. I mean, the first one was well hit. The second one was ridiculous. Dead center field on the line. One, two, and this is on the ground. A rolling. We'll go the short way. The Rockies get their first hit. Not much else. We are through four innings with the Reds holding a two to nothing lead at 20th and Blake. Friday. That's when you send in your questions. We answer them. We got some on Twitter. We have some on Facebook. You can find me at Root Sports underscore JC. This one's from Pete in Golden. Pete wants to know a little bit with the Olympics. 
Should baseball be back in the Olympics, or does the World Baseball Classic suffice for that? You know, with baseball and softball not in the Summer Olympics anymore, it is a shame. It's a huge part of our culture, especially uh, as Americans. We would like to be part of that and represent in there. But I'm going to throw it back to you guys, especially for you, Huey. What do you think? Should baseball have a fighting chance to get back in? Yes, I think so, most definitely. I, I know that the baseball and, and softball have gone together with the same federation now to try to get both those sports back in the Olympics. And I think it is. What's holding it back is do you shut down the major league season for a couple weeks to, to get major league players to go? I understand what they're trying to do with the World Baseball Classic to, to take that and use it instead of an Olympic event. But I, I love the Olympics. I'm a big fan of the Olympics. Yeah. I, I love the Olympics, and I, and I love the best going against the best. And, you know, in most sports, look at, uh, you know, basketball now. We're sending all our top players over. It works out in the summer games. It, it doesn't necessarily work out unless you were take a break in the summer in baseball. It's every four years. Um, what? How would it infringe on the World Baseball Classic? We'll have another World Baseball Classic next March. Um, but baseball, when, when you see some of the other sports, I don't want to disparage any sports. I'm not going to, you know, right. try to be cute and clever and say, you know, this sport's there, that sport's there, kind of lesser uh, sports internationally. But baseball should be in the Olympics, I would concur. More speaking than of the 10, world baseball thousand uh, athletes have descended upon it. Yeah, speaking of the world baseball classic next year the first round is going to be hosted part of it at salt river field at talking stick along with chase field down in phoenix yep one and one the count on zach cozart Or excuse me, on Drew Stubbs. One out in the inning, two and one. Cozart hit that slow roller to Jordan Pacheco. This has popped up, and this one's playable. Pomerantz thinking about Pacheco. it, but now Pacheco will make the catch. Two gone, Brandon Phillips will come up. Time for the Excel Energy High Efficiency inning. Let's move back to the first inning. It was quick and efficient from Drew Pomerantz's perspective. Cozart to ground ball to short, easy pickings for Josh Rutledge. Drew Stubbs, pop up right side. Scudero makes the catch. And then Phillips, first pitch he sees, a roller to Rutledge. Learn about energy efficiency and how to save money in your home by visiting responsiblebynature.com. Here's Brandon Phillips again, and he takes a strike on the outside corner. Phillips came up in the Cleveland Indians organization, and they basically gave him away to Cincinnati. And he was probably the one guy this year, maybe along with Przinsky, that should have been an all-star and wasn't. Yep. He's hit 420 before that swing since the All-Star break. Good bounce back inning for Pomerantz after giving up two in the fourth. They won two, three, fifth.
Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the Ford Fusion. Quality you want, economy you deserve. Ford Fusion, go further. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T rethink possible. And by King Supers, more value for the way you live. Coors Field all lit up. And the first pitch of the fifth inning, bottom half of, is a strike, a curveball from Bronson Arroyo to Todd Helton. Hilton hit a comeback for his first time up. Just came off the disabled list this afternoon. Battling a hip injury. And it's a two strike count. I'm just watching Todd with this swing. The, the front leg with the leg kick, it's coming up higher than it was when prior to going on the DL. Change his arm angle a little bit on that. Uh, Bronson, pitch. Yeah, Bronson will do that. He'll drop down to a, a side arm, low three quarters. To create different types of movement. And this is one where he really drops the back leg down in the arm. That one was more over the top. That evens the count, two and two. Here's that uh, different leg kick by a Royal. Yeah, and Mike Shaw Subaru. I mean, look at this. Look at how high that is. That Super Mo shows the angle of how that toe is also pointed. You don't see pitchers not bend that front leg when they come up and, and make the pivot before they proceed home. And Todd serves at the center field, a base hit for the Rockies, their second of the night. First time they've had a leadoff man on, and the only other hit, Cargo last inning with two outs. When you keep your weight back, good things are gonna happen. Todd kept his weight back, his hands back. Soft serve this one into center field. Top hand comes off to create more length with the bat. The helicopter finish. And another base hit. Two to nothing Cincinnati. Willene Rosario out of the sixth spot in the lineup. Jordan Pacheco on deck. 250 average, 16 home runs, and Willene has driven in 40. about this Rosario made his big league debut last September September the 6th to be precise now early in the season he was alternating with Ramon Hernandez before Hernandez got hurt so Willene has, has produced more at bats the last uh, month and a half or two but he has more home runs since 9-6 than any catcher in the National League he has 19 Brian McCann the multiple all-star catcher for Atlanta has 17. Yadier Molina has 17. Carlos Ruiz, 15. Those guys have far more at bats well, far than, than Willene, and yet he has produced more home runs. And far more experience. Yes. And that's why you'll, you'll live with some of the struggles behind home plate. Let him iron those out because of the, the, the bat he has. How many guys short of an Albert Pujols or a Mike Trout arrive in their finished product? This ball is fair to third. Roland will get the force out on help. One out. Well, and especially a demanding position like catcher. Two to talk coming up next half inning. 
You can join in on the conversation by texting Toyota to 720-720. And if you send us a text, you'll be entered to win a one-year family membership to the Denver Zoo. Where Doug hangs out in his free time. Kind of sort of all the fine zoos around the world. Every city we go to. I love the zoo also. I do too. I have to go out there to see that elephant passage. Yeah, the new uh, exhibit. Toyota elephant passage. Checo fouls it back. So in the spirit of the Olympics, Huey, asked this question on the radio show today. If you were gifted enough to be a medal contender <laughs> in any summer Olympic sport, what would it be? And I, I couldn't swim. I dropped like a rock. This ball's lined to deep center field. Stubbs can't catch it. Rosario is going to get a stop sign at third on the double by Jordan Pacheco. Well, we have two of the best in the game as far as National League rookies are three with Rosario, but Zach Cozart. With his 90 hits, leading all rookies, but Jordan Pacheco with his average, that's first. And he takes this pitch from Bronson Arroyo, a fastball that was supposed to be away, right on the sweet spot of the bat, head down, followed through all of the above, over the head of Drew Stubbs in center field. Elin Rosario's motor in the whole way. And we got that ball back in quick. The first runner to second base tonight for the Rockies. Josh Rutledge at the plate. Well, I'll let you come back yeah, to well, that. You but, know what, but, but here's a, I don't care what I'm you gonna, think you could do. Right. I'm giving you a, a wish granted. You could be a great swimmer if you want. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. It's not what, what athletic okay. ability you possess right now. Swung on and missed. Two strike count now on Rutledge. Two, excuse me, one out and two in scoring position. And Andrew Brown has already come out on deck for Pomerantz. Now Rutledge three for seven this year with runners in scoring position. And Arroyo fans Rutledge. And Andrew Brown was standing there on deck, but it will be Pomerantz to hit. So interesting Jim Tracy because Pomerantz is pitching well a 2 nothing game but you have a chance to tie it up with a base hit and he's close to the you know pitch count the arbitrary pitch count I put that in quotations and you think well maybe you've seen a lot of five and flies with the Rockies in this uh, piggyback rotation but Pomerantz is going to hit for himself here he wants to give him a chance to get a a win with one out, I think he would have hit for the pitcher. With two, Jim's thinking, no, but you're right, Drew, because Drew Palmer does have 73 pitches. And he's just coming back after seven days off from his last start. This is a gamble that Jim's, Jim's taking. Time for tonight's CenturyLink high speed pitch. Fast speed and a low monthly price. Visit CenturyLink.com. Bronson Arroyo, 89. And uh, great news Drew Pomerantz has thrown up several 95s tonight. Pomerantz with a home run earlier this year in Milwaukee. That was a no doubt home run. I'm trying to remember, was that off Granke? To look back. Look at my notes. I got it. It was off of. Oh, hold on a second. Maybe it wasn't in Milwaukee. It was in San Diego. That's where it was. So, so it wasn't off Greg. No, nope. we know that. No. Nope. Because he matched up against Marco Estrada in that game earlier this year in Milwaukee.
0-2 again. Pomerantz getting a piece despite failing. It was off of Edison Volquez. Pretty heady stuff. Well, yeah, and also a, a more difficult place to hit a home run. San Diego than Milwaukee. Cheat up on the plate a little bit because Arroyo keeps working him away, away, away with Pomerantz's first move toward third base. And this ball is bounced toward the hole, but it's cut off by Frazier and a good feed for Bronx and Arroyo. So the Rockies get a couple hits, leave two in scoring position. We'll go to the sixth, two to nothing. Sack fly from Todd Frazier. Also uh, an RBI double from Ryan Ludwig. Get a green pack today. It's only $24 for two great seats with $5 going towards the Green Fund, which plants trees in the Denver area. Join us on Sunday for the next green game as the Rockies continue the series against the Reds. Visit coloradorockies.com slash green for more information. Sixth inning will feature Jay Bruce, Ryan Ludwig, and Scott Rowland to face Drew Pomerantz, who, other than that hiccup in the fourth inning, has pitched a beautiful ball game. And the velocity is back up again. That's that's also encouraging. The other thing is, remember he got hit in the leg earlier in the ball game. That has not had any ill effect on Drew either. Jay Bruce fly ball to left fly ball to right field. 19 home runs tied for seventh most in the National League. The 61 RBIs tied for eighth. Yankees beat up Boston tonight. Ichiro's Yankee Stadium debut 10 to 3. Ichiro 1 for 4 scored a couple runs. Tough night for the former Rocky. Aaron Cook went four innings allowed six runs on seven hits. And another broken bat for Drew. That's five tonight. So real quick get back. I would like to. The 100 meter. 
I'd be the fastest I man in the world. I want to be the fastest man in the world if I was an Olympic sport. Yeah, I thought about that for a while, and, I, and, and my first, my quick response was, yeah, to, to pull off the double, the 100 and 200, be Usain Bolt. And then I said, well, maybe the decathlon, be the, be the gold medalist in, in the decathlon. Incorporate everything. Two and one on Bruce. Fouled off. Somebody uh, wrote in, Huey, they had you for synchronized swimming. And I'm just not buying it. <laughs> no, no. See, I was just thinking what I could possibly train for. That was the athlete coming out of me. That was not the question you were asking. <laughs> yes, he went. Yeah, no question he went. Another strikeout for Pomerantz. That's number five for Drew. Somebody asked you, do I think it would be best with the way the season's going to shut down Tulo for the rest of year? That's Sean down in Colorado Springs. Um, listen, if if he's 100 percent, and I underline 100 percent healthy, and I was talking to the trainers about Troy earlier, and there's time left in the season. I think it's best for Troy to get back out there the confidence that hey I can move around and, and play the game at its highest level so the first time that occurs again is not next spring. I, I think, think that's important provided provided he is truly 100% healthy. Well and they won't let him back on the field before he's 100% healthy first but second athletes they don't like the uncertainty going into an offseason that I'm not going to be ready or the first time I go back out there again, is something going to happen? This is a broken flat flare that's going to drop. Ryan Ludwig, two for two and a walk. Wait, how many broken bats we have that's to now? six. Yeah, that was an awesome pregame in Cheyenne. That was a blast. Well, they got a little wet. Nice. Frontier Park. It was nice that the governor of, uh, or excuse me, the mayor of Cheyenne could uh, could join them on the set. A lot of the, cow the, the cowboy. cowboy. Yeah. Chris Young, not the pitcher. There's no term but limits, evidently. Uh, he could run for, for whatever cowboy. he wants to up in Wyoming. Wait, who is that? That's the former mayor of Cheyenne. Folks, that's that, a young, a young, uh, <laughs> I'll put those in quotes, Drew Goodman. That was, uh, that was circa 2009. <laughs> oh, come on. Just you had hair. Years ago. Yeah. I have hair now. I just cut it shorter. That looks just like your, your oldest son, Jacob. If you put a hat on Jacob, that's what he would look like. Yeah. You're condemning him for life, aren't you? <laughs> That's when I wore a younger man's hat. Here's the 2-0. And that's from that's from old Cheyenne, too. You were actually working. Yeah, we used to go up there every year. Talked about this. Cover the daddy of them all. Do a lot of programming from up there. Absolutely loved it. You and I, because because obviously you're a big star at the University of Wyoming. Your wife's from, from Wyoming. You still have great ties to that, uh, that wonderful state. And here's the 2-1. We, we lamented the one thing. There's Abe Morris, great cowboy. Abe was a bull rider, a very good bull rider. And uh, lives down in the Denver area now. He's written a couple of books, in fact. Abe was very close with Lane Frost, the late Lane Frost. Lane Frost. Here's a 3-1, and that's a base hit to left for Scott Rowland. So two are on, and that'll bring up Todd Frazier just to finish that thought. You know, because of the baseball season, it's very difficult for us to get up there. So it was, it was a lot of fun to have the pregame show. And an hour pregame show. Yeah. There's Adam Ottavino. And go Rockies, comes, go USA. I like yeah. that. Here comes Jim Tracy to go get Drew Palmerantz out of, after 87 pitches. 
57 for strikes. So Pomerantz goes five and a third, responsible for the two men left on. Frazier will hit against Adam Ottavino when we return. The Reds two and the Rockies nothing. Jay Bruce struck him out in the sixth inning, then he gave up the uh, broken bat single to Ryan Ludwig and the base hit to Scott Rowland. So he's gone after 87 pitches, and Adam Ottavino will try to put the inning down. Todd Frazier, Ryan Hannigan coming up. Well, pitch arsenal for Adam Ottavino. It's a fastball. Four seam, also two seamer, but since he's been moved to the bullpen and not as a starter, he it's fastball slider. And his fastball is 94 to 95 miles an hour. And he had his, his clean an inning as he's had in a while down in Arizona the other night with one inning, one strikeout, nine pitches, seven for strikes. He reminds me a little bit of Luke Gregerson in that you're going to get that slider 55% of the time. Yeah, Gregerson with the Padres, same thing. They come out, and this is that's the beauty of being a one-inning reliever because you can you can do that. There it is, but it skips past Willeen Rosario. That's not good. And now the runners move up to second and third. You can no longer produce two outs with one swing, at least uh, conventionally. Yeah, now you're going to have to bring the infield in. And one more look. He just held on to this ball too long. And that hits into the other batter's box where the toe hold is for a left-hander. It skips by Rosario. Two on Todd Frazier. If you can get Frazier two outs and again the eighth place here, you could intentionally walk him to get to Arroyo and pitch to the pitcher with two outs. This is the key pitch. Strike him out. And this goes through Rosario. That'll cost a run. And I know that ball hit the dirt, but that's a ball that's got to be blocked. He just didn't get down enough. You're right. If you call for it, you've got to be able to block it. Right through the five hole. Turns the glove over. But see how much space there is, Drew? The glove, that's where he should be when the when the ball hits the dirt. Helton's going to give it a look along with Kadire and uh, no play. 
to sloppy baseball. They're both scored wild pitches, so back to back wild pitches. And without putting the ball in play from a first and second situation, there's now a runner at third and another run in the bank for Cincinnati. That's 49 wild pitches. That's two more than Cleveland has for the major league lead. And the Rockies lead the National League in pass balls. Rosario with a dozen. Frazier gone, two outs. Hannigan coming up. Rockies can employ the same strategy. They're going to put him on. Pitchers need to have the confidence with the slider and the curveball that they can throw the ball down in the dirt and that it will be blocked. And that's an area that Rosario continues to uh, need growth upon in. Yeah, it's just every day going out and blocking balls when you're not when you're not starting that night. Intentional walks Joey Votto with 13 and Ryan Hannigan interestingly you wouldn't expect his nope. name on that list David Wright sure Carlos Beltran Ryan Braun absolutely Ryan Hannigan no so Arroyo with the plate Reds up three to nothing. They about hit the Rockies seven to three. Rockies had a dozen players. I see Cat mentioning the Rockies on their off day yesterday were. University Hospital visiting a number of the shooting victims from last week's horrible incident. We talked to a couple of players today about that. He said, "What a moving experience that was." Ground ball foul. They they had an email today from a member of the hospital staff who said it was so good to hear laughter. From many of the people hospitalized, it had been the first time they had heard any kind of laughter this entire week. Josh Renicky was, and a number of players came over to read that. This goes through. That's going to cost the Rockies another run. They get a Royal at first, but the run counts. Does it? No.
thing. Now, I've gotten a lot of tweets and Facebooks today just congratulating the Rockies, saying thank you for stepping up and visiting the Aurora shooting victims yesterday in the hospital. It was really the Rockies' first opportunity that they could do that. They went to the hospital. About 12 guys went over. They visited several different rooms of victims that are there. And Jim Tracy even told me today it wasn't even just the victims from, from the shooting that inspired them when they went yesterday. It was other people in the hospital and how people who have been in the hospital for other illnesses or with other family members outside of this shooting, they have gone to these to these family members there, and they have gone to the other victims. It's kind of become a community at the hospital. And Jim Tracy just said we were so inspired by that. And I know that, as you guys mentioned, Drew and Jeff, the hospital staff was just so excited to see the Rockies come in and excited to hear that laughter, as you mentioned, and see smiles on faces that they haven't seen for a week. So, again, great effort by the Rockies. In fact, all sports teams in town really stepping up, and it's great to see that community come together. Yeah, no question. Well put, Jenny. And as Jeff Houston mentioned, last half inning. That's uh, that's some time spent that none of those players will ever forget. Dexter Fowler takes a breaking ball high, leading off the sixth inning. The Rockies trailing three to nothing. Dexter's hit 13 of his last 15. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Nine of those 13 have been multi hit games. 381 average over the 15 ball games. They set up away, and Dex hits it on the ground to Brandon Phillips, his fellow Georgia native. Time now for tonight's Chevy's Dare to Compare. Chevy's full lineup of vehicles makes it a clear winner. The competition can compare Chevy. Made for Colorado. Most career innings pitched by active pitchers never placed on the DL. And Levon Hernandez, Derek Lowe, Mark Burley ahead of Bronson Arroyo, who's thrown almost 2,000 innings without going on the DL. Interestingly, Justin Verlander's on there. And the reason I say interestingly is that Verlander the only true power pitcher of that group and it's a little bit unusual well, for a power pitcher to go without any sort of arm issue. Well and you throw on top of that how many innings he's pitched last year combined with the playoffs and you're talking close to 300 innings and he hasn't missed a start then this year. LeVon Hernandez over 3,000 innings. Yeah well <laughs> LeVon will be throwing when he's 60. He may be he 60 might be right 60. now. Yeah. Carlos Gonzalez two outs and nobody on and the, the the whole rotation you think back to the 2009 season for the Rockies when they won 92 games they they went almost the whole year without having to make a change in their rotation that's what Cincinnati's done so far which is a modern Reds record you have to go back to 1898 the last time this happened through the first 98 games you made a, a wonderful observation earlier. They've, they've played only 30 players all year. Yeah, then that's fewest in all of baseball. And you're wondering, well, how many of the Rockies used? The Rockies have used 42, which is tied for eighth most in the major leagues. And those five starters, Miami was the only other ball club that had used only five starters. But when they traded Anibal Sanchez, they'll get a new starter tomorrow in Evaldi. So that they'll be in second place. The Reds will be there by themselves. This is line to left and Cargo whips around first. He's going to have himself a double. Rocky's first, or excuse me, second extra base hit. Pacheco had the double last inning. So a two out double for Cargo. That rest is helping him. He's two for three tonight. And they approach both times. Even the one he pulled to right was to take the pitch. He just caught it out in front. This time the pitch is away from him. He slices it into the left field corner Ryan Ludwig cuts it off but he just tosses it in Michael Kadire part of the 12 that were able to visit with the shooting victims yesterday 
And Kadire tops it to third. Rolling with plenty of time. And the Rockies are done in the sixth. Being shut out three to nothing by the Red Hot Cincinnati Reds. Nothing. Fourth inning, Drew Pomerantz ran into a little trouble. A uh, double off the bat of Ryan Ludwig as he went down and got the curveball. And Brandon Phillips would come around and score. Phillips had singled, and then a scoring fly ball would get the second run home. In the sixth inning, a wild pitch that Rosario couldn't handle from Adam Adovino. Provided the Reds with their third run. Adovino continues on. Zach Cozart will lead it off. He's 0 for 3. And he takes a slider for strike one. That look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus, where luxury has an address. Heads up. Because there were wild pitches, or a wild pitch that ultimately scored that run, even though it was Adovino's wild pitch. The three runs against Pomerantz are earned. So it's five and a third, three runs, seven hits, a walk, and five strikeouts. In the air to Carlos Gonzalez, shallow left, he's got it. Cozart's over for four. What's your uh, overall opinion on, on the five and a third tonight from Drew Pomerantz? Well, not too bad. I, I'm sure he would like to have a couple of those runs back, and he would like to have. Couple base hits in the fourth inning. The the velocity was back. That was nice to see. Six broken bats. That was also good to see. He just wish that he could have got gotten through that sixth inning without having to come out. Just one walk. Dexter makes the catch. Drew Stubbs is retired. Brandon Phillips will come up. Well, first 12,500 fans on July 31st will receive Rockies rewards coupons courtesy of the Colorado Rockies. The St. Louis Cardinals are in town. And St. Louis going into tonight, sitting five and a half back behind the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Strike on Brandon Phillips. It will also be the eighth time that Drew Palmerantz has started here at Coors Field and had two runs of run support or less. Tonight he had zero. 
hard to win when you don't get any run support. Remains a two strike count on Brandon Phillips out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. I mentioned that uh, the Indians traded Phillips to the Reds in a deal that uh, was not the best deal. Jeff Stevens cash and a player to be named later Jeff Stevens April 7th of 2006 that one didn't turn out no, so well not so NBA. much no, when Brandon Phillips has been an all-star should have been an all-star this year and signed a contract extension with the Reds you know he was with your original organization I forgot that he came up he did come up with with Cleveland but as a young player he was acquired from the Montreal Expos, along with Lee Stevens, Cliff Lee, and Grady Sizemore for Bartello Colon. Bartolo is still pitching. 2 2, Phillips a liner oh. right at Rutledge. She reaches down and makes the grab. A 1 2 3, seventh inning for Adam Adovino. Reds leading 3 0. Stretch time at Coors Field. Sports is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two-for-one Rockies tickets by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. By the Hyundai Fuel Efficiency Drive Sales Event and your Colorado Hyundai dealers. By the new summer barbecue menu at Burger King. Let's have a barbecue today. And by Ramp Trucks. Get a great deal on a new Ramp Truck at the Ramp Summer Clearance Event going on right now. With Jeff Houston and Jenny Kavnar, Drew Goodman from Coors Field, Todd Helton with a shot up the middle, and they had him shaded that way. That provided the Reds with a quick out. So Helton gone, and Willeen Rosario will come up in a three to nothing ball game. Part of the improvement for Bronson Arroyo this year is he's gotten back to being the type of pitcher that he 
that doesn't rely on power. He got caught up in numbers and how hard he was throwing in velocity, and that led to 46 home runs last year, which led Major League Baseball. This year, just 16 given up. That's a base hit for Rosario. Rockies have not been able to bunch anything offensively. Cargo's got a single and a double. The only time they had two hits in an inning was the inning when Hell singled in the fifth. Pacheco doubled. Rosario was actually now the lead runner after a force out. He was held at third base. Rutledge struck out. Pomerantz grounded out. Here's Pacheco now. This replay brought to you by the Colorado Lottery Second Chance Drawing through October 1st. Enter your non-winning scratch tickets at coloradolottery.com. Pacheco unloading the double. And for Jordan, his 12th double of the year. Two and L, career 375 hitter in 24 at bats against the Cincinnati Reds. This ball toward the gap. Will it get down? Nope. Bruce Stubbs makes a fine running catch. And there are two outs. I saw that speed from Drew Stubbs and the jump that he got on this baseball. This was a ball that looked off the bat. It was going to fall into the area in front of Stubbs, but he, with those long strides, six foot four young man, he reaches out. Snags it right above his ankles. Josh Rutledge, a ground ball to second and a strikeout on a slider, and he chases up. He's been confounded a little bit tonight by the veteran. Yeah, the, the trickster that yeah. is Monston Arroyo. Well, if he, Arroyo. if he was left handed, he would be crafty. Yes. I don't know why you can't be a crafty right handed. I'm not sure. But you don't hear him. There's Those a, two terms together. No, there's like a baseball law against it. Oh, and two. Maybe we'll start it because he's been crafty tonight. Bronson was named after Charles Bronson. Is it there a show? Then came Bronson. Not that I watched, but I think yeah. there was. Foul back. Bill Bray, the left-hander. Alfredo Simon, the right-hander. Simon getting the ball back faster from the catcher because he, he gets it to he, the catcher yeah, he's quicker a, than he's Bray. Close to 100. Oh, and two count, two outs. Rosario is at first. He singled. And there's a base hit for Rutland. Now the Rockies will get the time run up in Eric Young. I was wondering if Jim Tracy's strategy would would swing here a little bit to a, to a, to a pardon me, using the same term a big swing guy with two outs and a time run at the plate, like Andrew Brown, like an Andrew Brown, for instance. Yep. And when you, you do have some rain coming down right now. Or the former, so, or the former red, Ramon Hernandez. Ramon, you have the yeah. luxury of the, well, the with third Jordan, catcher. Yeah, with Jordan, you could have gone that route. But instead, he sends up Eric Young Jr., who by far leads the Rockies in pitch hit at bats. This will be his 49th pitch hit appearance on the season. Former Arizona pitching coach Brian Price. And yeah, Dusty will do this from time to time. It's Brian Price who makes the uh, the pitching change. And maybe that's why Jim sent up the switch hitter, knowing that he had both guys going out there to Dusty Baker, and he wanted it 
determine which side he wanted his guy to hit from. So the flamethrower Simon will come in. Two on for the Rockies with two outs in the seventh, trailing 3 nothing. Earlier this inning, George Pacheco thought he had another base hit, maybe more. And the running catch by Drew Stubbs. That's brought to you by Frost Brewing Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. So Bronson Arroyo is gone. He went six and two thirds. The Rockies have a couple of hits in the inning. Willie Rosario is now at second. Josh Rutledge, a two strike hit, is at first base. And Alfredo Simon on for the 23rd time, a member of what has been one of the top bullpens in baseball this year. They had the lowest ERA in the National League at 253. And you see the Pirates are right there. Those are the two teams battling atop the National League Central. Yeah, and then the LA, San Francisco, Arizona are battling in the National League West. So the bullpens at Port Dusty Baker has the luxury to be able to go to a guy like Simon, has a 164 ERA. Hard thrower. Anywhere from 94 to 97, 98 miles an hour. Eli fouls off the first pitch. It was a slider at 90. That just tells you how hard he throws. It is sprinkling here at Coors Field. We haven't mentioned this, but you know it's the seventh inning. They're two outs. A lot of pressure on the Rockies. You think back to the days when LA had Eric Gagne, and it was an eight-inning game. Because the Reds have. Araldis Chapman down there. He is striking out basically two hitters for every inning. He almost doesn't have an ERA. So if you're thinking about rallying in the ninth inning against Chapman, you may have to think again. Well, and, you know, I mean, you could go back as far as San Diego with their bullpens and you look at, at what happened there. And if, if you didn't have the lead in the sixth inning, after the sixth inning, you were. You were in trouble with Chapman striking out 43 guys in those last 44 appearances. I mean, they're just striking numbers when a guy throws 100 miles an hour, 102 miles an hour. All star this year in Chapman. One and two on Junior. You got a curveball, this last pitch. And this is top to second, and Phillips makes the tag on Rutledge. So the threat is put down by Alfredo Simon. Seven innings complete. The Reds have all the runs.
Jay Bruce, Ryan Ludwig, Scott Rowland. Hear from our own Cowboy every week by visiting the Right of Cowboy section of the Root Sports website. Hall of Famer Tracy Ringlesby will bring you Rockies game notes and interesting insights into the team and its players. Check out his game notes on the Rockies and Reds series by visiting right now. RootSports.com slash Rocky Mountain. Ponchos are out. The rain has uh, intensified a little bit. 3-0 Cincinnati. Matt Reynolds, the third pitcher utilized tonight by Jim Tracy. And ending in two-thirds of scoreless relief by Adam Adovino, though he did have a wild pitch, a couple of them. And uh, the second one produced a run. Drew Pomerantz, five in the third, three runs, seven hits a walk and five punch outs. Jay Bruce swings and misses. Oh, Matt Reynolds has been used everywhere up and down this bullpen lineup for Jim Tracy. Two seam, four seam, change up and slider. And we'll throw the slider more to the left handers and the change ups more to right handers. Settled in nicely out in the pin. Two balls and a strike on Bruce. A couple of fly balls and a strikeout for Jay Bruce. And now a ground ball to Todd Helton. Not where you want to hit it if you hope to reach. Ryan Ludwig will come up. Ludwig's had a productive night. A walk, an RBI double, and a run scored. And a single, and a run scored. It's one hitter and out for Matt Reynolds. Four righties due up in a row. Jim Tracy is going to ask for Mike Extra. 3 0 Reds back in a moment. win three nothing right now the Rockies trailing and it'll be Ryan Ludwig to face Mike Ekstrom one out nobody on in the eighth inning extra making his eighth appearance for the Rockies well with the four right handers in a row Jim Tracy goes from the left hander Matt Reynolds to the right hander Mike Ekstrom, fastball, four seamer, and slider now. This is predominantly second pitch. Here's the 1 0. Make a play, Huey. Can't, the overhang almost got that. Not reaching out to grab it. Not a good idea. Ludwig uh, 
guy that broke out after his 30th birthday. Remember in 08 with St. Louis, he had 37 home runs, 113 ribbies, batted 299. Some guys, it just takes longer to figure it out. Two and two on Ludwig. Now he's carved out a nice career. He actually was 29 most of that year. Just 33 now and has over seven years of service time. 34. Yeah, earlier, earlier this month, yeah. Rutledge with the long throw. Two out. Scott Rowland coming up. And the first 20,000 fans on July 28th will receive a Troy Tulowitzki T-shirt courtesy of Coca-Cola. Call 1-800-388-ROCK for tickets or go online to coloradorockies.com. Make sure you're the first 20,000 fans. That would be tomorrow. Good look at your watch. I did. You? It's baseball season. It's Tuesdays. Fridays or like Tuesdays to Mondays to Wednesdays. It doesn't just keep rolling. I was say if it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium. Remember that? Yes. But that's that's the mindset that the players get into too. They don't. It's just Sunday, a, Sunday's the Sunday's day you a, reset. Yes, because it's typically a day game. You're, you you come into the ballpark later. Two balls and a strike. On Scott Rowland celebrating his 2000th major league ball game today. Indiana native. He, he had signed to play basketball at the University of Georgia. He was a tremendous high school basketball player. And he lines this one to right, and Michael Kadaya reaches up, makes the catch. We'll go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Rockies trailing 3-0. They'll have the top of the order when we return. Their eighth consecutive ball game. They're trying to improve to nine and two without the services of Joey Votto. Rockies left the top of the order in the eighth inning. Who wants tacos when the Rockies score seven or more? You get the Rockies taco special. And if you want to receive text message alerts when that occurs, text the keyword taco to 720720. Feed your Rockies fever only at Taco Bell. Dexter fouls went off down the left field line. 
Ryan Ludwig ran over there. No play. 0-1 count. We've had a, a steady rain for the last couple of innings. It rained a little bit late this afternoon. It rained a lot down south of here. Well, the Broncos had to practice indoors after starting outdoors briefly. Our oh, thunder man. and lightning in the area south of here. Batting practice was canceled. And both teams hit inside. Yep. They took the tarp off. Right around 515 520 today. Dex held up two and one. Saw that gorgeous average seventh inning or later 372. Did it a couple nights ago down in Arizona had two hits late driving in a run. 341 from the leadoff spot. That's second in all of baseball behind Mike Trout. Fowler, Scudero, Gonzalez against Alfredo Simon. We've got the final out of the seventh inning with two men aboard. He got the pinch hitter, Eric Young Jr. You know, that's a good job. I know it's a check swing. He did go. That's a swing. That, that's a that pitch. Hit. Both of those in this at bat that Dexter in years past would have swung it. Because of the location, down and in. Those are the ones that were eating him up. And starting to change the book a little bit. Yes. If you can lay off it, they'll have to go to a different spot to get you in a better hitting situation. You got a pitch to hit, and it's going to be an out, but obviously a much better swing. That situation. The three two pitches line to right. Jay Bruce makes the catch. Marco Scudero, who's 0 for 3, will come up. Well, Sean Marshall, the left hander, is out in the pin warming up instead of Bill Bray for the Cincinnati Reds. And Marshall has. He's, he's got closer experience. Close, well, because he did earlier this year until Chapman was ready to go. Came over in a trade with the Chicago Cubs. Now, it'll be interesting if Scudero's retired, if Dusty still elects to go to the left-hander to face Cargo. He might let Simon pitch to Cargo and save Sean Marshall if it gets to it for Todd. I don't think there's any question though if Scudero reaches that he'll he'll go to bring Marshall. In Marshall. Two ones down, three and one. Again, they have the best bullpen ERA in baseball at 253. Just a 217 batting average against for the Reds bullpen. Simon's allowed only three earned runs in his last 28 innings. In the air to deep left center field, and now the wind taking it. And having to come back to the baseball is Ludwig. He can't make the catch. It'll be a double for Marco Scudero. Sixteenth double on the season for Marco. Ryan Ludwig right now is looking at the flags, and then the wind has picked up in the last five minutes or so because this ball was hit hard. And I understand why Ludwig thought he had to turn and go and he had to cut back. And it goes off his glove. But off the bat, that, that had a loud sound. The Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo shows us that it went off the edge of the glove of Ryan Ludwig. Well, this is interesting. Simon, with Marshall warming up, is going to face Gonzalez, who's two for three in the game, a single and a double. 
And this skips away from Hannigan. Scudero to third. On the wild pitch. They saw a couple wild pitches by the Rockies. Now one by the Reds to move Scudero into scoring position. Three nothing Cincinnati. One and one. I'm just looking at the numbers for Sean Marshall and, and Carlos Gonzalez. Cargo is four for five off of Sean Marshall with the home run. And if you remember when, when Carlos hit for the cycle, and he hit that ball into the upper deck for the walk-off cycle. That was off Sean Marshall. This ball pulled down the line, foul. Well, they have the luxury of three lefties in their bullpen. The other lefty being a guy who warmed up earlier in Bill Bray. Redondo has joined Sean Marshall. Cargo's one for two against Bill Bray, and that was an option. But they're down the road here. It's one and two. Cargo got a fastball. Maybe that was a changeup. Oh, then he fouls it off. It's kind of interesting in that he's a setup guy right now. He throws in the upper 90s, but it's a four-pitch setup guy. Well, he's claimed off waivers from the Baltimore Orioles right before the end of spring training. And he replaced on the roster Todd Frazier, who's now at first base. Frazier got sent down to the minor leagues. He was the last the cut last of spring cut. training, yep. And a comebacker. This isn't going to get it done. It's the one place Carlos Gonzalez could not hit the baseball. And he did. Anywhere else, he's going to get an RBI, and the Rockies are going to be within two. 81 mile an hour changeup off the end of the bat. Simon slipped was as he was going for the ball. And then checked the runner, got Carlos at first. Well, this game will eat you, eat at you, won't it? The Dyer's yes, it over will. three. Rockies right now 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. I told you how much this eighth inning means because if you get a Raldis Chapman in the ninth inning, it's not a lot of fun. It doesn't matter, right hand and left hand, it's 101, 102 miles an hour. The guy who re reportedly hit 106. Couple years ago. And this is on the ground to short. Scudero left the third. Eight innings completed Coors Field. The Rockies trailing three nothing to Cincinnati. Lottery. Don't forget to play. Ninth inning at Coors Field. The Rockies trailing three to nothing.
The pregame show is up at the Dadium Mall in Cheyenne, about 90 minutes from here. And without further ado, Joel Platt. Joel. Howdy, Drew, live from Cheyenne Frontier Days. About to take part in this fun little ride here. But coming up on the Toyota postgame show, it's been the wild, wild west. What's up with all the wild pitches? And Bronson Arroyo, he's been really good. He's like the big red machine tonight. Plus, we'll talk with Jim Tracy. This thing's getting fired up. Here we go. Can't even wear my hat. I, I thought on the second time around, Joe looked a little white. It's a, it's a good it thing was, he yeah. sent it back when he did. Yeah, because uh, there could have been something else happening with that ride with Joel. Yeah. Joel looks right at home in, the, in, in, his, like the, uh, in like his cowboy attire. attire. Yeah. Todd Frazier with a 1 0 count leading things off against Mike Extra. Rockies down 3 0. Frazier tonight, a sack fly in the fourth. A couple of punch outs as well. Strike one, one and one. Cincinnati. It's like moving day after the All Star break. Talk about moving day in a major Saturday. Well, the Reds are 11 and two since the All Star break. They've been moving in the right direction. And the uh, amazing thing, as we have chronicled tonight, is that they've done most of this without. Their MVP candidate, Joey Votto. Yeah, everybody was wondering what was going to happen to the Reds. How is Dusty Baker going to keep them all together? He's played by Pacheco. Well, we've seen that more from Jordan. The, the range that he's had both to his left and to his right. Second course like cold hard blast. You know, the Rockies haven't hit many balls hard tonight. Jordan Pacheco did. A double earlier in the ball game. The Rockies could not capitalize. Second and third one out didn't score. Ryan Hannigan. The other thing too, the Reds have been they've been stingy with the runs allowed. Third fewest in all of baseball, 353 runs allowed. That's it. I'll win you a lot of games. Two strike count on Hannigan. Got jam. Rutledge is uh, playing through a ground ball, isn't it, Huey? Just keep coming after it. But then he slowed down with his feet to be more under control as he finishes the last two hops. A jam shot, so it has some different spin on it. See how he slows down and gets under control, catch it, look it all the way in, and make the transfer. Looking all the way in, bury the head. And then get the grip when the ball's wet and you know a catcher's run and you can grab that that seam. Sometimes you can't. You just grab it and you throw it. But when it's wet out, you hope to grab a seam and you can do that when you know who's running. Pinch hitter in the pitcher spot, Xavier Paul, former Dodger. And Paul lines a base hit to left center field. Bring up shortstop Zach Cozart. That's just the first hit that the Rockies bullpen has allowed. Three and two thirds inning. Drew, pa Drew Pomeranz gave up five and uh, gave up three runs and five and a third. Seven hits, a walk, five strikeouts, a lot of good things. And most notably, the velocity was back up after being down in San Diego. I mean, he was consistently 93 to 95. 
There is Zeraldis Chapman speaking of hard throwers. I think they finally found that role that they want him in. They're trying him in the bullpen and then as a starter. That's a line drive that Scudero can't reach. And Cozart has his first hit of the night. That'll allow Stubbs to come up. Well, we'll talk about Araldis Chapman next inning and his role down the road. Seems to be a pretty healthy debate going on within the Reds organization. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority. The Colorado Rockies may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. Stubbs tonight, who Edstrom's getting ready to face. 0 for 4, pop out, strike out, another pop out, and fly ball to center field. The Reds, 18 games north of 500, so not surprisingly, they've been a good road team. It's not just uh, work done at Great American Ballpark, where they've been outstanding for Dusty, but out on the road, they're 27 and 22. 31 and 18 at home. Chris Spire off to Dusty's left. Longtime friend of Dusty, confidant, he's his bench coach. Chris has some minor league managerial experience. He was at AAA for a few years with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Here's a look at the complete staff with Dusty. His pitching coach, as you've seen, Brian Price, Brooke Jacoby. He's a good hitter in his own right. His big league Indians. career. Yeah, Billy Hatcher's at first. Mark Berry's a veteran third base coach. Juan Lopez is Juan's, the bullpen coach. Yeah, and Juan's been with Dusty for a long time. One ball, one strike. The wind still whipping through our field mics. Still a very light rain falling. Rockies in the ninth against Chapman will have help Rosario and Pacheco. And tomorrow, July 28th, the Rockies Wives will host their annual charity baskets event. The silent auction will take place on the main concourse in center field where fans can bid on baskets filled with unique Rockies items. That's tomorrow. The Rives charity event. Well, the bag was right there, but Marco Scudero decided to flip it over to Todd Help. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning, 3 0 Cincinnati.
Cheyenne. That's a live shot right now from Frontier Days. We're Joel Clatt, Tracy, and George are having a good old time. Pre-game show from up in Old Cheyenne and the post-game show from Old Cheyenne as well. But first things first, the Rockies trying to rally against a guy that has become absolutely dominant. He has put up ridiculous numbers this year. Raldis Chapman will be his 45th appearance. He has recorded 11 straight saves. Listen to this. This is all you need to know. This is the big leagues. The last 40 hitters he's faced, he has struck out 31 of them. That's why he has 90 on the season in just 47 innings. 90 strikeouts in 47 and two-thirds innings. You want to take a look at his arsenal for Wallace Chapman. You don't need much when you're forcing fastball. Is anywhere from 97 to 100, 203 miles an hour. You mix in the other ones just to keep the hitter honest. And he slings it a little bit. It's yeah, not it's, easy to pick it's up. It's hard to pick up because he, he doesn't have the high leg kick that Bronson Royal does, but he hides the baseball, drops it behind that left leg, and then slings it, as you mentioned, and all, and all of a sudden, here's the ball. Try to pick it up if you can. Fastball on the inside corner at 97. We're talking about there seems to be a healthy debate within the Reds organization about how to use Chapman. There's a slider for a strike. Chapman was competing for a spot in the rotation at the start of the year. You may recall Ryan Madsen, who they signed to be their closer, as a free agent away from Philadelphia. Went down with a season-ending injury. He had Tommy John. There's the uh, strikeout of help on three pitches. And so they moved Chapman ultimately to that closer's role. To say he's well, excelled would be an understatement, especially once he got his feet uh, settled there. But going forward, do you use this great arm as a starter? Or do you keep him where he is and make I, it an eight-inning game? I keep him where he is, keep it making an eight-inning game, and then, then you put also Sean Marshall and some of the other guys they have. You make it a six-inning ball game and come in with Chapman to close the ball game out. 99 miles an hour. Do you want him out there 60 times, 65 times, or 30 times? I think that's the question. And if it is 30 times as a starter, he's going to have to come up with more pitches. Fouled off, two strike count. It was 100. Triple digits for the first time. Well, I know Dusty Baker is a big fan of what he's done in the ninth inning. And in Dusty's mind, we know he's good here. Right, and if you have the starting pitchers to, to fill the other spots, leave them there. And at 101, he strikes out Rosario another amazing thing in 33 now of his 45 appearances he has struck out at least two 33 out of 45 appearances Araldis Chapman has been at least two and he only has 14 walks so it's it's not like he's out there throwing the ball all over the place and then getting the strikeout six pitches six strikes for Chapman So Rocket back up the middle by Jordan Pacheco on a hundred mile an hour fastball. Well, if there was any question about how quick Jordan Pacheco's hands are, they were answered on this pitch. I mean, he turns that hundred miles an hour, and Mike Shaw Subaru Supermo even gets the barrel there. I mean, that was off the sweet spot of the bat. You mentioned the low walk total as Rutledge will step up with two outs. Last year in 50 innings, he walked 41, which is not very good. It's bad. Now he, he, he did strike out 71, but he's really cleaned up the walk issue. That's a strike at 100. Well, his, his mechanics and his windup are so much more in control. He's just going from the set position. That's why I say if you move into the rotation, would he go to the windup and have to use more movements? When the Dodgers were winning 
uh, a ton of games to Jim Tracy. And they had Eric Gagne down there. And he was a failed uh, starter. It didn't work out with him starting, and he, he got moved to the ninth inning ultimately. It was game over. How about the nasty boys for Cincinnati Reds in the early 90s? Game over when they came in. One and two on Rutledge. Two outs in the ninth. The Rockies trailing three nothing. Here's the one two. Strike three. At 101, Rutledge not happy with Marty Foster, but Marty's walking off the field. And the Reds have shut out the Rockies three to nothing. Cincinnati has won eight consecutive ball games. Chapman strikes out the side. Pacheco did reach on a base hit. Bronson Arroyo gets the win. He levels his record at six and six. Drew Pomerantz takes the loss. Pomerantz is now one and six. Tonight's delivery of the game is brought to you by Jimmy Johnson, America's favorite sandwich delivery guys. Bronson Arroyo won six and two thirds of shutout baseball. He allowed just six hits, didn't walk anybody, and he struck out three. Bronson Arroyo, in his last start at Coors Field, didn't get out of the second inning, giving up six runs on seven hits, including three home runs. But tonight, a different story. Visit JimmyJohns.com to find a location near you. Fourth time the Rockies have been shut out at Coors Field this year. And as I mentioned, sixth time overall. Seven shutouts for Cincinnati. The boys are ready up at Cheyenne. That's where the postgame show emanates from tonight. 3-0 Reds.